All right, so Mongoose Traveler 2nd Edition, the Deep Knight Revelation campaign. I was super duper excited about this uh, when it hit Kickstarter. This is a Martin Doherty production, um, and it amounts to a boxed set and then a set of six hardcovers that support the campaign. Um, if you do not get on in on the Kickstarter, and if you are not fortunate enough to have picked this stuff all up in PDF off of a bundle of holding or something like that, then getting all the material is really quite expensive, considering that the hardcovers, quite slender hardcovers, are, I think, pretty fundamentally necessary for actual execution of the campaign, unless you want to be prepared to make even more stuff up as you go along. And frankly, I think one of the problems with the campaign is that you, the referee, really need to do a great deal of legwork in terms of fleshing the mission out, fleshing the crew out. I think the intention, and the books more or less say this, is that you are going to kind of do a lot of that stuff on the fly and not do a lot of prep. That is not a, an approach I, as a traveler referee, would be particularly comfortable with for this particular type of campaign. So this is a 10-year exploration voyage sponsored by a private company and partially subsidized by the government of the Third Imperium um, to the edge of the spiral arm to confront a mystery that the Imperium knows is there. One of the things that the books are fairly vague about is, is exactly what are you telling the players and what do the characters know about the nature of the mission and the threat that they'll encounter at the edge of the spiral arm, at the mouth of the Great Rift. This is all laid out relatively vaguely in the campaign materials, and in fact the mission start itself is kind of vaguely sketched. You... Uh, separate the entire mission into sort of these five segments, each of which gets one of the five support books to cover it, with some encounters that you can place along the way and things like that. Obviously, in a campaign like this, the journey is the point. The destination is less important. And therefore, I found the, uh, the, the capstone adventure, which is included in the box set. So the box set includes two books on the mission, sort of a prologue adventure to the mission, which can be played by characters who are on the mission or not. Um, it's kind of left up to you. You don't get a lot of great guidance for this. There is additionally an earlier adventure that ties into this that uh, has the players encounter the same threat in general terms that they will encounter at the end of the mission. Then the fourth book in the box set is a is the capstone. It is the destination. Now, in some sense, some of the destination stuff is, I think, a little bit of a letdown, but there's also some pretty cool stuff in there. I, I pretty much like the structure of the mission. I, I think it, it has a lot going for it. The mission itself, however, you're, you're talking about a really big ship. It's, a, it's an ex-military decommissioned cruiser that's still got most of its armaments for this long journey. But it's decommissioned. The mission is under the auspices of this Deep Knight Corporation. And it's not really clear to me what the motivations of the Deep Knight Corporation are. It's vaguely stated that they're looking to uh, find opportunities for commercial development along this really, really far route into through largely unexplored space. But you don't really get a lot of motivation. In addition, because it's a civilian ship, I find the chain of command on this ship to be really kind of wibbly-wobbly. I'd be much more comfortable with it if it was like a joint operation between between the Imperial Navy and the Scouts um, with a civilian contingent. I think there are other opportunities for uh, sort of cross-functional uh, groups to be on the mission as well, including one that I absolutely intend to incorporate, which is not in the published material at all. Now, prior to the start of this first leg of the mission that the books detail and which there is a supporting hardcover to cover, that starts at the edge of the charted space, okay? So that entire journey, which should take about 30 months according to the book, and which, according to my calculations, is approximately correct, is not covered at all. You actually have to figure out from the books where the mission is starting from. It's starting in Vland Sector at Gikur Naval Base, and it's going all the way out past Horea Sector to the edge of charted space, and that's where the uncharted space part of the mission starts. 
Now, one can absolutely just assume the mission kind of starts there in Meteor Res, and you can start your campaign there. But you also get this prologue adventure, right, that's going to have happened like a couple of years prior to that. I really would have appreciated, and uh, frankly, an entire book, just on that initial mission phase of traveling through charted space, part of which is in Imperial territory. You'll exit Imperial territory from the Spinward Marches. You'll travel, travel through several sectors of charted space but not imperial space kind of like no no man's land type of territories some of those sectors have gotten coverage in traveler materials for mongoose traveler second edition but not all of them that by itself is fine but you're like cruising within a couple dozen parsecs of jodani space here too do the jodani know about this mission they are after all telepaths i bet they do there's something interesting going on there Furthermore, of all the big empires in Charted Space, the official Traveler universe, it's the Jodani that have the most experience with these long-term missions. They have, after all, mounted seven, or maybe it's eight, different expeditions toward the galactic core and have explored this entire corridor of sectors in the direction of the galactic core. Real missed opportunity here. So I feel like the entire package sets out a really cool campaign structure, and certainly there's a lot of usable material in um, the supplementary volumes. The box set itself, I think, sketches out the mission to a degree that I think is a, a little underdone. I would have liked to have seen more on that. We could have honestly gotten an entire book on the ship. However, the ship itself is an element class cruiser, or one of the element class, class cruiser family. Um, so you do have that extra box set of element class cruiser deck plans to use if you want however the ship also has some customized pods that have been built for this specific mission that are not going to be included in the element class cruisers box set but are detailed in the deep end revelation box set there's about 400 plus crew members on board this ship and a number of sort of uh, subsidiary vessels that can be used and should be used as scouts um, to sort of lay out the way ahead because you're traveling through uncharted space. You don't know where you're going to be able to refuel. You have to find a way across the Great Rift just because of the astro geopolitics of the Traveler universe. It's kind of necessary to go the long way around, which by itself is pretty cool. Um, it's really an exhaustively uh, done campaign in a lot of ways, and yet it feels underdone. There are things that I would want to be in it, like that initial mission segment as you're traveling through charted space. I don't think you necessarily have to spend a ton of time on that, because the route is pretty much going to be set. You pretty much know where you're going to be go going. It's charted space. You know where the refueling points are. You know where the gas giants are, all that stuff. But you're going to be flying this enormous militarized ship that's no longer officially an Imperial Navy ship, but it's still got its spinal mount and most of its armaments through potentially hostile minor states and client states and Jodani allies and all that stuff. I really would have liked to have seen something on how to handle that. I also feel like this mission is a natural for troop style play where the players each control multiple characters, but you're really only playing one at a time. I intend to explore this when I run this campaign in, hopefully in 2024, we'll see if that actually pans out. Um, that doesn't really mesh well with Traveler 2nd Edition, Mongoose Traveler 2nd Edition character creation, because that process takes quite a while, and if you use the out-of-the-box character creation, I think you'll need several sessions of character creation, or one really, really long session, unless everybody's already familiar with it and can execute it fairly quickly, I think it's going to eat a lot of time. Now, in the Traveler Companion, another support product for Mongoose Traveler 2nd Edition, this is not mentioned in Deep End Revelation at all, there is a package-based character creation option, and I would probably use that. I would probably create one character for each player using the normal Traveler magical character creation system, and then all other characters controlled by players would use that package-based character creation system. It's just going to be a lot faster. Furthermore, I might do that along the way, but part of the idea behind using it uh, true style play with this campaign is that you can have players having 
characters at different areas of responsibility along the mission. You have one group of player characters who are the away team, one group of player characters who are the command staff, one group of player characters who do something else on the mission. Maybe they're the sciences team or something like that. I think this is really a natural fit. Um, this is not a brand new idea in RPGs at this time. It's never been formally introduced to Traveler, but it can certainly be used in Traveler as well as any other RPG, and I think it fits really well here. Maybe I'll talk some more about this in another video if folks want to see that. Let me know in the comments.